Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cardiac Wire Show. My name is Jake Fishman. I'm the host of the show and the editor of the Cardiac Wire, and we have a great episode for you all today. We have Dr. Sujit Koathavitil from Dooley Health. Uh, so this is a cardiac imager, and he's on the structural heart team over there. And we're going to be talking about kind of those two topics and, and how structural heart and the imaging of structural heart care ha is evolving and how teams can evolve along with it. Uh, Dr. Koathavitil, welcome to the show. Jake, it's a pleasure to be here, and feel free to call me Sujit. All right, you got it. Um, well, I'll tell you what, I gave a brief intro just now, but if you could give maybe a deeper intro to yourself and your background and what you do at Dooley Health, then we'll take it from there. Sure, sure. Uh, so my name is Sujith Kalathavithal. I am the Director of Cardiac Imaging at Dooley Health and Care uh, in the section of cardiology. We are the largest independent uh, you know, physician-owned multi-specialty group uh, in the United States. We have approximately 1,000 physicians, and we have roughly 50 cardiologists. I've been with the organization for about a decade and I oversee the cardiac imaging uh, modalities in our department. And I'm also heavily involved in our structural heart disease team. Right, so maybe going a little bit deeper into structural heart, that's been an area that, you know, in the last 10, 15 years has seen just about as much evolution as, you know, any part of cardiology. What are some of the, the big evolutions that you've seen the steps along the way that have brought us up to where we are today? Yeah, great question. You know, so structural heart disease, uh, again, I'm biased. I would argue it is the most exciting, you know, subspecialty within cardiology. You know, structural heart disease refers to disease affecting the heart's valves, walls, and chambers. Of the, and, you know, for many, many decades, this was solely the purview of cardiac surgeons. And over time, we've evolved a variety of catheter-based minimally invasive procedures to treat structural heart disease that really complement what our surgeons can offer. So it's really created a much more uh, balanced and nuanced uh, conversation now about therapeutic options for our patients. Okay, so along with those that therapeutic evolution, I assume that the way that we image for for planning and uh, and for execution of the procedures has evolved as well. How how has your your imaging um, technologies evolved for structural heart? But it, tremendously, and and I think that uh, the advances in imaging have really allowed us to grow the field. And that's part of the reason why the field is where it's at today. Um, you know, in the old days, um, our imaging was an echocardiogram, very basic echo, um, and a chest x-ray, maybe a, you know, maybe a CT scan. Uh, nowadays, um, we're doing 3D echocardiography. We're using cardiac CT um, with live cine imaging, um, yeah, along with cardiac catheterization hemodynamic data to plan our procedures safely. And then for the on the software side of the technology, what what are you doing on that side? Yeah, so um, you know, uh, from an echocardiography standpoint, so three D or four D imaging, which is live three D imaging, um, cardiac CT using workstations also very very helpful. Our, our uh, workstations have capabilities baked into them for specifically planning uh, a structural heart procedures as well too. And I understand that you use uh, Merge Cardio as a core part of your structural heart technology stack. How do you use Merge Cardio? Yeah, very much. So uh, Merge Cardio, you know, we use it in a variety of ways. So we've actually been partnering with Merge in our practice for over a decade. You know, Merge acts as both our PACS provider and as well as a reporting system for echocardiography and nuclear cardiology. One of the other nice things about Merge is they have a variety of partners that they've worked with um, in various imaging modalities that provide workstation support for us. So for example, Terra Recon um, is um, uh, the vendor that we use um, for our CT workstation, and they have a fantastic product. And uh, we use Circle for a cardiac MRI. And going back to Merge, I feel like the first way I was introducing them, you know, as a journalist, both on the imaging wire side and the cardiac wire side, it's just each year covering them as uh, best in class. And I was like, oh, something must be going on here. What What do you think is the secret behind uh, Merge Cardio's best in class uh, winning streak that I've seen? Yeah, yeah, there's there's a variety of reasons. And I've had a chance to really kind of over the, the last 10 years grow a relationship with Merge. So I think first, you know, Merge offers uh, the best echo and nuclear reporting packages in our industry. Um, you know, we're an independent uh, group. So um, we actually partner up and we do our procedures at three different hospital systems here. You know, I'm in the Chicagoland area. And um, each of these uh, uh, hospitals, a few of them use Merge, a few of them use other systems. And I can tell you, 
having used the other systems, for me, uh, the Echo and Nuclear Reporting Packages that Merge offers are very easy to use, quick and stable. Um, so th that's a clear-cut advantage there. You know, second, Merge has partnered, again, with these vendors that offer what I think are the best imaging solutions in their respective modalities. And again, having um, so, you know an organization like Merge who can identify strong partners or you know, leaders in their respective you know modalities to partner with just makes it very easy. They've already kind of curated a good list of of people who um, excel in their respective modalities. You know, and, and finally, you know the customizability and service. Um, you know, with Merge, when we're working on reporting, um, as well as you know the, the various IT issues that we all struggle with. And to give you a specific example. Um, a little over six months ago, we finally launched our cardiac PET CT program. And uh, it, prior to that, we had been using SPECT, which was our older nuclear imaging modality. And you know, PET CT while it does share some commonalities with SPECT. It offers a lot more features. And um, the templates that we use for reporting had to be modified. And there was a lot of things that had to change to make the report stable, to make them look good, and, and be easy to follow for a referring physician. I literally met with um, the uh, application specialist at Merge um, two to three times a week for a month. And each time we'd sit there an hour, we'd go through the um, the reports line by line, double checking grammar, making sure all the uh, all the uh, drop downs worked well, that that uh, the the product was stable. You know, I, it's rare to have that degree of service. You know, and having that degree of customizability honestly leads to a really good product. So. I, I'm I'm very thrilled for uh, for Merge winning you know the uh, uh, class award, but also I'm not surprised. Some of the things that you said uh, just now kind of jumped out at me, and part of it was the fact that you're going working with different hospitals and then having different technology experiences. And one of the things I keep hearing about is this uh, theme of bur uh, bird burnout and overwork uh, among cardiologists. I'm curious how how cardiology teams can use technology to ease burnout and overwork? It's a complicated topic, you know, with a lot of different moving parts. You know, uh, I think all of us uh, in healthcare, not just physicians, but ev literally everyone in healthcare, be it the nurses, our technologists, um, all of us are being asked to do more work uh, in the same amount of time, you know, and not make mistakes while we're doing that. And that leads to burnout. And I think there's, there's multiple potential, you know, solutions there. You know, the first thing, you know, just from a merge cardio standpoint, you know, um, and w with anyone who uh, offers reporting tools and imaging tools, uh, is refinement of these tools to make them easier to use. So making them faster, quicker to load, and more stable. Um, you know, in the end, all we're using a variety of different tools that talk to each other. So again, being able to open up from one reporting package to a different imaging package, making sure that it's working. Uh, quickly, it loads quickly, it's stable. Um, that's key. I think that the burnout yeah, occurs very quickly when things crash and things are slow. And then we're getting, you know, we're getting messages. There's more, there's more reports kind of filing in. So that, I think that's, that's part of the solution there. And the second, and this is kind of a unique thing for me. Uh, we've pretty much moved, I think, you know, all of our sites to cloud-based storage. And as a result of that, there's some, one of the key advantages of that is you can do remote reading and remote visualization of, uh, of studies. So since I'm uh, in an independent group and we do our procedures, at mul our structural heart procedures at multiple hospitals, a lot of times I'm at one hospital um, it, doing a procedure in between cases, I'm reading studies, um, I can log into the cloud and pull up studies that were done at a different institution and read those studies and get them in. And to have that functionality, again, and that it's quick and stable, you know, I think, again, to me, reduces burnout. You know, it's a waste of time for me to have to drive back to a different location to read a study. But if I can access that data in a remote fashion and read it between cases at a different location, you know, that's great. You know, I, I, I'm a little embarrassed to say this, but um, some of the imaging studies that I do, um, I'm the only one in our group who reads them. So when I'm on vacation, I'll be called sometimes about a patient who's very sick and unstable is in the hospital. And it's not that hard for me to just log, pull up my laptop, log in, even I'm on the other side of the world and read a study, you know, in 20, 30 minutes and, you know, it's not a big deal. My wife is not so thrilled about that, but I'm, uh, I'm okay with that, you know, if it has to be done. Um, and then, you know, last but not least, and this is the big hot topic I think that we're all talking about, is using artificial intelligence to automate our workflows. Um, with echocardiography and cardiac CT uh, specifically, the amount of data that, that we have to extract from those studies has really gone up exponentially. You know, we're looking at valve disease, for example, 
at a much finer level of granularity than we did 10 years ago. And the amount of measurements that we have to perform uh, has just increased. And yeah, you know, our workstations do have some of that functionality baked into a point, you know, but to actually have an artificial intelligence screen a study and actually pre-measure a lot of these parameters that we need would be amazing, you know, and then for us as a reader to go back and review those param- you know, to review those measurements, change and modify them if we need to. That to me is kind of what there's a lot of hope in our, you know, um, in our industry kind of really, you know, pinned on is where can, can AI take us to the next level in terms of gathering this data in a quick and efficient way? When we started talking earlier about the evolution of structural heart care and how that kind of dictates how structural heart imaging and all the things around it um, have to operate. Uh, when you look into the future and you know the next phases of evolution for structural heart, uh, how can cardiac imaging teams be prepared for those changes? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of, again, it, a very fast moving field with a, with a lot of new things coming. I think right now, where we stand today, um, for any program out there, I think it, it, that you know that's you know that's really moving to kind of grow their experience, you know, and and, and um, a procedure they can offer in the structural heart space. Really integrating cardiac CT earlier in the workflow is crucial. I think you know all the high volume advanced centers are already here at this point, but um, for places that are up and coming and really trying to get a, a, their structural heart program the next level, I would strongly encourage all of them to really look at get, how can they incorporate cardiac CT earlier into their workflow. And I believe having you know your imager who reads cardiac CT actually come to your meetings where you discuss these cases is going to be. How vital for growing your program. And to give you some very specific examples, Jake, um, in transcatheter aortic valve replacement, TAVR, um, you know, CT, you know, really is our primary modality now for sizing the aortic valve annulus and picking out what type of valve we use and also predicting the risk of complications from that procedure. But that's only the beginning. You know, um, we use CT heavily now when we have moderate aortic stenosis to make sure we're not missing severe aortic stenosis. Or if a patient has already had a valve replacement, uh, and an echocardiogram shows that there's higher than expected gradients across the aortic valve, CT now is the first test that we turn to in our practice for looking at valve function. You know, as opposed to a transesophageal echocardiogram, which is a uh, you know a semi-invasive procedure. Um, so again, using CT uh, early on in the management and follow-up of valve disease is big. Um, for left atrial appendage closure, same thing for all the programs out there that are doing that. If they're not already using CT, you know, again, I would strongly encourage all of them to really look at uh, making CT part of the workflow, not just for planning the procedure, but also for the follow-up afterwards. Um, it's quicker. It gives you more information. It's more sensitive at detecting things such as device leak and thrombus. And from a patient's uh, standpoint, it, it, it's easier. You don't have to sedate the patient. Uh, it's a quick procedure. Um the next big, um, you know, uh, leap that we're looking at in the structural heart disease space is the tricuspid valve. So that's the final. You know, ironically, it's the first valve of the heart, and it's the largest valve of the heart. But I, but it, the, the irony is that it's the last valve that we've really kind of working on, kind of fixing because um, it's 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 large size makes it and unusual shape makes it particularly hard uh, to work on. But in the past year, we've had not one but two different transcatheter uh, therapies that have been FDA approved. One is a transcatheter valve replacement, and the other is a transcatheter valve repair strategy. And it's really interesting when you look at particularly the replacement strategy, uh, CT as well as uh, ultrasound through uh, transesophageal echocardiography are both key to the workflow there. And the complexity of, of combining you know, those two modalities for looking at the tricuspid valve you know, it, it is significant. So to all these programs out there that are really kind of looking to make that move into the tricuspid space, I would encourage all of them to, again, get comfortable with CT in the aortic valve space, as well as the left atrial appendage space. It'll prepare you well for the next uh, leap, you know, into tricuspid valves. That's um, re- really interesting. So uh, I, I th- that pretty much wraps us up for today, Sujit. Um, I, it's been it's been great to, to hear um, your insights into this, you know, really evolving space. And you know what's brought us up to today, and how the structural heart imaging teams have are thriving, and what they can do going into the future to make sure that they're ready for these next changes. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, for the people who uh, dialed in, um, thank you for for watching along. Hopefully, you learned a couple things about what you might be able to do 
uh, within your own cardiac imaging teams. Uh, so thanks so much, Sujith, and catch you next time. Thanks for having me, Jake. Thank you.